Broadcasting System presents The Mysterious Traveler. Written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Colvin, and starring two of radio's foremost actors, Clifford Carpenter and Lawson Derby, in Strange New World. This is the mysterious traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, and it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can, as we follow two young flyers on a routine flight which suddenly deviated from normal and brought them to a strange new world. Our story begins aboard His Majesty's ship, the submarine Valiant, somewhere in the vast Pacific. Captain Farnsworth commander of the Valiant, makes his way along the narrow passageway of the submarine to the sick bay and uh, steps into the small cabin. No. No, Pete, no. You're wrong. Wing flaps are down. What? Well, we're going to hit Pete. How is he, I guess? He's not too good, sir. Lord knows how many days it was adrift on that life raft. Did you find any identification on him? Oh, yes, sir. His dog tags... Here they are, sir. Thank you. Daniel Walker, Lieutenant, United States Air Force. Of course, sir. I knew from his lingo, sir, he was an American. That's quite so, quite so. Well, Higgins, you'll have to do what you can for him until we reach a ship with the doctor. Aye, ah, sir. Pete? Where? Where am I? I think he's coming out of it, Captain. Yes. Who are you? Lie quietly, Lieutenant. I'm Captain Farnsworth, His Majesty's Navy. You're aboard the submarine Valiant. We picked you up an hour ago. Pete. The island. I take it you were forced down while flying, Lieutenant. And what happened? Happened? Yes. Pete. Mendez and myself were flying a C-47 from Honolulu to Japan. There were only the two of us. Pete was the pilot. I was holding down co-pilot. We were attached to air transport and had aboard a cargo of medical supplies. We were six hours out of Honolulu, and I had taken over the controls. Pete was relaxing in his seat chewing on a chocolate bar. And where's the newspaper we picked up in Honolulu, Junior? Right behind you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, what's the good news? They exploded another atomic bomb. Los Alamos. Oh, yeah? Anything else of interest? Isn't that enough? Hey, what are you doing? I haven't seen that paper yet. I'm sorry. What are you getting so worked up about? What's one atomic explosion, more or less? Oh, you're just a kid. Wet behind the ears. <laughs> okay, Pop, relax. I was there. And the first one was used. Where? Hiroshima. Oh. Well, I didn't know that. There's a lot you don't know, Junior. Yeah, well, give me a chance, will you? You weren't on the plane that uh, actually dropped it, were you? No. I was piloting one of the escorts. It must have been quite a sight. Yeah. I hope I never live to see another one. Yeah. Hey, look at those clouds ahead. We may be in for a rough trip, Junior. Better let me take over. Yeah. This typhoon will 
Bucking must be hitting streaks of 150 an hour. Right in the center of it. Wide open? Wide open. How about turning back? I can. For an hour past point of return. We've been taking this beating for hours. When's it going to let up? That's hard to say. The worst typhoon I've ever seen. Look at the compass completely haywire. Any idea where we are? No, not anymore. How long do you think we can take this? What I'm worried about is the gas. We're running low. Yeah, how much we got left? Two hours. Two and a half, the most. Well, that means we're going to have to sit down and a drink. Yeah. Our one hope is that this lets up and we find a ship to sit down there. You better prepare a life raft. Stock it with plenty of water and rice. Okay. I'll take care of it right away. Well, looks as though we've come through it. Yeah. Well, that was one to tell your grandchildren about. It. There go the engines. Okay, Junior, get back to the raft. Be ready to launch it when we hit. All right, Pete. Put it down nice and easy. Those are my intentions, Junior. What's the altitude? 1,600. 14. Water rock? Well, not too bad. 800. 600. 4. Wing flaps are down. Get ready with the hatch, Junior. Right. We're down to 100. Hang on. You okay, Dad? Yeah. That was just going fast. Here, give me a hand with the rack. Right. There sure is a lot of water out there. Right. Climb in, will you? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, let's shove off. Uh. So far, so good. We shoved off into a sea that was running plenty high. In a few minutes, the waves carried us off, and the sinking plane was lost to sight. Pete rigged up a distress flag so we could be more easily spotted, and then we settled back to wait. Two nights and one day, we drifted in a fast-running sea with a heavy overcast. There wasn't a sign of a plane or ship. By the dawn of the second day, the overcast lifted and the sea became calmer. It was around noontime that Pete spotted the, the island. We rigged up a small sail and began paddling for it. You recognize the island, Pete? Yes. Any idea which one it is? Ah, uh, your guess is good as mine. Looks fairly big. Yeah. Hey, look, the channel through the reef and into the lagoon is directly ahead. The tide is helping to carry us in. Good. So we want to end up on those reefs. Brother, we're really moved. Yeah, another minute or two and we'll hit the beach. You think there might be some natives on the island? There should be. It certainly looks big enough. I don't see any huts or anything. No. Hold on, we're going to hit the beach. Yeah. Oh, that does it. Hop out and give me a hand. Let's drag it out of the water. Yeah. All right. Come shoot you. Good to be able to walk. Yeah. All right, pull. Okay. That's it. A little more. Okay. There. There. Oh. Hey, look at those coconuts. Yeah. Let's begin looking the island over, Junior. See if we can find any natives. Pete took some food and a canteen of water from the raft, and we started walking along the beach, now and then cutting in to look for water. It took us six hours to walk around the island, and the sun was just setting as we got back to the life raft. Sit down, Junior. Take a load off your feet. I don't mind if I do. Cigarette? Yeah, thanks. Well, we found fresh water. Signs that natives had once lived here, but they sure aren't here anymore. No. 
That's strange, considering the island is three miles wide, almost two miles long. I've seen natives living on islands one half the size. I wonder why they left. Got any ideas? No. Well, it's just you and me. Sit tight and lead the right for Riley. So we're picked up. Yeah. And the first thing we'll do in the morning is run up a distress signal on one of the palm trees. We'll also get brushed together for a fire. Check. What do you say we have supper and turn in? It's been a long day. Okay, Judith. Sounds like a good idea. something moving around in, in, in the brush inland. Oh, probably wild pigs. Island's full of them. Go to sleep. It, it, made, it made too much noise for a pig. Oh, holy smoke, Junior. It certainly wasn't an elephant. Well, maybe not, but... Do you hear that? Yeah. I hear it. Does that sound like a pig in the brush? Ah, maybe there's a herd of them. Who's kidding who? Okay. Okay, where do I get my 45? All right, come on. Let's have a look. And step lightly. Sounds as if it's over that way. Yeah. And listen to that. It almost does sound like an elephant. Look, the moon's coming out behind those clouds. That's a point. Yeah, and we're getting closer. That 45 of yours isn't going to do much good. I got the feeling I'm, I'm dreaming all this. I've been on dozens of tropical islands like this one. Biggest thing you'll find on any of them are wild pigs. That's no wild pig, brother. Yeah. That's why this seems like a dream. What the devil could it be? You see anything yet? No. Look out for those palm leaves they're sharp. Yeah, okay. Oh, Lord. Look. It was like a nightmare. A nightmare you can't escape from, try as you will. There, 50 yards away in a clearing in the underbrush, was a monster. A monster that baffled the eye and brain for a moment, then began to come into focus and take shape. What I saw before me was a water crab... Only a hundred times larger than the crabs that scurried along the beach. The monster crab in the clearing stood fully twenty feet high, with legs the thickness of palm tree trunks. The antenna on its frightening head was yards long, and its eyes were unbearably evil, even from a distance. Its twelve legs carried it slowly but lightly through the underbrush. Don't move, Dan. We don't want to attract his attention. Pete. What is it? I don't know. It's a crab of some sort. Only a hundred times larger than any I've ever seen. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Oh, the size of it. It must be at least 18 feet high. And those claws. Park a car under its belly. I can't believe it. It's moving off. Yeah. Do you think there may be others like it around? I don't know. I hope not. Look, it's moving toward the beach. Yeah, I see it. Yet I still can't believe it. Maybe it's an hallucination. Both of us having the same hallucination, hardly. Well, how do you account for it? I can't. It's on the beach going into the water. Yeah. That goes. God. Look. We better stay here, Junior. 
And just sit tight for the rest of the night. Well, it's good to see daylight again. Yeah. Let's take a walk over to that clearing in the underbrush. Where we saw it, huh? Okay. Now, what do you think about it? Well, I don't know. So maybe what we saw was just a fluke of nature. Possible. Yeah, possible. Yeah, what other explanation can there be? I've got one. But it's so incredible. I... Well, it's happened. I'll tell you later. I want to think about it some more. Well, here we are. Here's here's the clearing. Yeah. We first saw it by those palm trees over there. Look. Tracks of the monster. In the sand. Look how large and deep the tracks are. Yeah. It was a beautiful morning. Until now. Come on. Let's follow him. Okay. Now, they... They go through the brush here and and towards the beach. Yeah. Yeah, this is... This is the way we saw it go. And the brush is flattened as though a tank is rolled through here. Yeah. There's no problem following it. Look. This is where it came out on the beach. Yeah, and there's a track on the sand leading into the water. It's out there. Somewhere in the waters of the lagoon. Yeah. Look, let's unload the raft and then paddle out into the lagoon. What for? Holy smokes, don't tell me you're going looking for that monster. Well, not exactly, but I got a hunch. And I want to check on it. It's crazy paddling out into that lagoon. How, how do you know it won't attack once we get out there? I don't. It's just a chance we'll have to take. But why? So that I can find the answer to all this. Are you going with me? Okay. I'm going with you. Let's see, for an hour I've been paddling you across the lagoon. All you've been doing is peering down into the water. What are you trying to spot, the monster? No. Well, if it isn't a monster you're looking for, what then? Stop paddling. I think we found it. Found what? Take a look over the side. Into the water. I don't see a thing. Oh, the sun's been in your eyes. Keep looking towards the bottom. Till your eyes get used to the water. Uh, I don't see it. Wait a minute. I can hardly make it out, but... There seems to be a wreck on the bottom. A big one. It is a wreck. That's a battleship you see on the bottom. A battleship? Yeah, don't you understand? This island. It's Bikini. Bikini? You mean... You mean when they dropped an atomic bomb on those old battleships? Yeah. A dozen ships on the bottom here. All sunk by atomic bomb tests. Bikini? You don't think the island's radioactive, do you? Well, not enough to do us any harm. It's been years since the test. You said you had a crazy explanation for that monster we saw last night. Does that tie in with all this? Yeah. How? Now, look, you'll think I'm nuts, but here goes. We dropped a bomb into this lagoon to see what an underwater explosion would do to those warships. Now, what are you getting at? We know what the atomic bomb did to the ships. But do we know what effect it had on the fish life? Here in the lagoon. Are you saying that the monster crab we saw last night was the result of the bomb dropped into this lagoon? Well, what other explanation can there be? Remember, Dan, the effect of the bomb on the survivors of Hiroshima left wounds and illnesses that doctors had never seen before. Now, who's to say that the radioactivity in this lagoon couldn't have caused fish life to multiply in size a hundredfold? It can't be. It just can't be. Well, why not? Radioactivity causing a crab to, to, to grow a thousand times bigger? Well, how else can you account for that monster crab we saw last night? I don't know. Well, think about it. Meanwhile, let's paddle back to the beach. Of us, Paris, I don't 
across the lagoon to the beach. We dragged the raft out of the water. Time and time again, I found myself turning to look out over the waters of the lagoon as Pete's words ran through my mind. His explanation seemed an impossible one, and yet, what other answer could there be? The two of us sat on the beach smoking. Watching the moon come up over the lagoon of the king. Sure is a beautiful night. Yeah. You think they'll send search planes this way, Pete? Well, sooner or later, they'll find us. As long as we have fresh water and fish, we're okay. Yeah, I guess so. Pete! Look at the water from the lagoon. Holy smoke! Hey. Being churned up as though there were a dozen whales out there. Could it be whales on these waters? Pete, there's something enormous out out there threshing a lot. Maybe it'll break through to the surface and you'll be able to see it. Could it be that monster crab we saw last night? Oh, it's something bigger, much bigger. Jesus. That would make whatever it is a couple couple hundred feet in length. Uh, The way the water's been churned up, there must be a fight going on out there. Look, coming out of the water. The monster crab we saw last night. Another one following me. And still others. Dan, some of them are coming this way. Come on, we've got to get out of here. What about our supplies? There's no time to grab them. Get a move on. This way. There were, there were dozens of them coming out of the water. They came out of the lagoon. They were fleeing the fight that was going on out there. Whatever it is, it's in the lagoon. I don't want to see it. Well, it must be the side of the destroyer. Ruben ran into me. I'm getting pushed. Oh, let's stop for a minute. Let's get our bearings, huh? Yeah. Do you hear that? Yeah. Those monster crabs. There must be dozens of them. Overrunning the island. Direction is coming. No. The moon. Come on, fly those clouds. And it's, it's coming closer. What are you doing with that 45? It's better than nothing. Maybe the sound of shots might frighten it off. It's getting closer all the time. I can't see it. Can you? No. Keep your eyes open. Sounds almost on top of us. There it is. Here No. 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 Pete. No. Pete. Look at the cloud. The red bat. I can't. Oh, my quiet. Let me look. to the beach for medical supplies. No, 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 don't. No, it's too dangerous. It's no use anyway. No use? I'm dying. No. No, Pete. Oh. Listen to me. No, first... First thing in the morning, this raft is still okay. You shove off. Don't... Don't stay here. Too dangerous. Please, let me go over the medical supply. No, 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 no. When you're rescued, explain to them strange new world. Sea life. Multiplying hundredfold. Radioactivity. Of atomic bomb. And lagoon. Sea life will increase. Overrun. Seven seas. 
Tom. Please. Tonkin speaking, this program came to you from New York.